Well, my name is Tomasa. My middle name is Manibusan, and my last name is Shin. <laughs> I'm half Korean, and I'm half tomorrow. <laughs> my birthday is uh, July 20, 1933. My, my father's name is Antonio Shin, that's Korean. My father's Korean. And my mother's name is Maria Belgomis Manibusan. Yeah. Can you tell us how your father came to Saipan? He was a contract worker from Japan and from Korea to Japan and then from Japan to Saipan. You know, cutting tree on the mountain, something like, they try to clear uh, the place uh, for the Japanese to use it, you know, some for farm or whatever, I don't, I don't really know. My older brother's name is Jose. I have two Jose, yeah? Huh? <laughs> that, the first Jose is, that is our oldest brother. He was born before my mother married my father, you see. So his name is Jose. And then the next one is Vicente, Francisco. And then uh, the girls next. After. Oh, our older sister is Rosa, that is Rosa and then Vicente, Francisco, Francisca. We have so many names, yeah. And then it's me, Tomasa. Then after me, we have Elias Calistro. That's our last one, yeah. We have nine of us, I think, altogether. Yeah. My mother and my father found a, a house, you know, so that we can stay, yeah. Because my father used to work as a contract worker also. <clears throat> so he worked in many other companies, you know. He's a good uh, contractor, you know, like my father. He's a Korean, but he really find so many jobs that he can work on, yeah. That's how my family live, you know. As long as they move, the company move, so even my father have and to move and his whole family have to move also, yeah. They live, they stay in Ponape also. The whole family stay in Ponape. Because wherever my father go for his contract, then he have to bring the whole family. Song Song Village is, is now is the original village in Rota, but before uh, the name of the place is Tatatsuk. Yeah, that's the uh, local people stays. Song Song is also uh, only those Japanese, you know, and the businessmen were there in Song Song. Yeah, they call it Song Song. That's the original village, you know, of the Japanese, yeah. Me and my three-year-old brother, uh, together, we were going to school. Uh, so we have to try our best not to miss the, the train that we have to ride to where the school is, yeah. Because we live in a company place quite far. You have to ride on the train, yeah. And then after the... the what you call this? There's a stop sign for bread uh, for the for the train. If you don't get out of there, then you have to do something to get out of it because you're gonna miss the school also. Yeah. So me and my brother is a good jumper. <laughs> I told him I said, if I told you jump, so you jump. <laughs> we have to wait until the train go a little bit slow. You know, that's the time we have to jump out of the train. We are difficult times, you know. 
and I used to tell my brother, get ready, get ready. <laughs> then when I know that the train is already like slow it down, I tell my brother, jump. So he has to jump out. <laughs> then I follow him, yeah. Because I'm older than him, three years or older than him. So I tell him what to do. So good thing because he's a good jumper too. And I always like, you know, uh, I'm like a tomboy. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do all those things, so I'm getting good of it. So we never get into any injury, you know. Yeah, we do it right. Yeah, we consider us a Japanese because my father's Korean, so they consider us Japanese. Yeah, so we go to Japanese, where all the Japanese children, yeah, attending school. So we school in there. Yeah. My father learned how to speak Chamorro, even though not really clear as we used to talk to, but he can understand Chamorro also, my father. He have to learn because <laughs> my mother's Chamorro, and <laughs> my mother used to speak Chamorro to him, so my father have to learn Chamorro also. But he's Korean, you see. <laughs> yeah. So I'm half Korean, I'm half Chamorro. <laughs> I remember I already like uh, let me see 12 years old 11 years old then I'm, I'm not I'm not too sure though but I'm still little I still going to school that time in the Japanese school you know? yeah so everybody have to learn Japanese so we went to a, where the Japanese because my older sister, she's three years or older than me. So she never attend the whole Japanese children, you know. He have, she have to go to this where local people tomorrow. She learned Japanese there, but she doesn't learn as much as we do because me and my other younger brother, is, uh, we learn so much Japanese because we, join all the Japanese children, so we speak Japanese all the time. Yeah, so how it's, that's how it differs, you know. Yeah. Because there's a, before the war, there's a local people, they have local teachers, but they also learning Japanese also, yeah. So, but Japanese people, they always have Japanese teachers, yeah. They never have local, I don't, me and my younger brother is, we never go to local uh, school. They always send us to where the Japanese is. They consider us as Japanese for my, because of my father, yeah. We used to stay in a, a company barracks, you know, like, because my whole family is working for this company. Uh, they hold, uh, they call it, uh, in Japanese, they call it Kohatsu, Kohatsu Company. And so the whole family stay in a barracks, you know, like Japanese provide that for his worker. So we stay in that because my whole family is working like my older brother, my second brother, older brother, and then my sister is with us also. My older sister is not with us because she already married yeah, local people, so only my father and my other brothers and sisters, yeah. But we have a lot because six, maybe, I think, nine of us, yeah, brothers and sisters. Nobody stay in the house already because you see, before that war started, we already in that company barracks, you know, because my father, you, my whole, I think my whole brothers, the oldest one and my sisters are working as a, on this company, Kohatsu, they call it Kohatsu. And uh, so we stay in the barracks. This belongs to the Japanese, you know. So we were separate in the other places, you know, like there's no Chamorro there except for those who's working for the 
company, Kohatsu, yeah. So we stay in the barracks, and then just for I don't know how many, how long, but and then the war started, yeah. And then when the war started, before that war started, uh, the Japanese warn, uh, give us warning. It says, all of you have parents have to find a safety place for their family to hide because the war is coming and it's getting worse. So my father looked and my older brother looked for a cave, yeah, and they found this a very nice cave. It's a big one where the whole family can stay in. It's very big and it's right attaching to the wall of the mountain, yeah, that cave. So we stay there. And because it's very high, so my, my father and my older brother make a, you know, stairs to climb up there because it's very high. So that's where we stay. During daytime, we have to go down because my mother have to cook something for us and only we sleep, sleep up on the cave, you know. There's a big cave in there and the whole family can, yeah. Only my father is separate himself. He wouldn't stay with all of us because the place is not big enough for the whole family. So my father used to have a little shelter down um, uh, beside the cave, you know. Yeah, so she, he stayed there. But all of us, more, we stay up in the cave. Yeah, it's a big cave. You have to climb up stairs. They make stairs by, you know, make out of the bamboo, you know. So we live there. People is very hardworking man because we use, uh, my family used to work as this company. Yeah, and that company uh, take people by group to plan sweet potatoes and all other food that we can eat, you know. So we never go hungry because we have a lot to eat. And during those uh, war times that's difficult already, no provision coming from Japan or anywhere, no rice. So they have all rations, like very little for the whole family. Each family, uh, each kids have one cup of rice and maybe soup or something. That's how the company, because my family working as a comp to the company, this company, it's a big company. Uh, they call it Kohatsu, yeah. So that the whole family is working for that company. So we not really worry about food those time because those company will provide even uh, we were in the cave. Still there's a cook. So there's a very big pot for everybody that you have to have your family share. Yeah. That's how they do during those difficult times, you know. There's no provision coming anymore because no plane, no boat, nothing can go. Yeah. So that's how it is. Yeah. I remember that I was still like, uh, let me see, 11 years old, 10 years old. Yeah, the first one, um, first American came, yeah, to Rota. Still, you know, fighting like, but not really a war like any place in Saipan. Because Rota is a very small island and only a few soldiers, Japanese soldiers there. So they don't, we don't see war so much, you know, because we have a cave for my whole family and Japanese doesn't bother us because of my father considered us a Japanese, he's Korean. Mm. So they never really bother us. They consider us as a Japanese also. So that's how we are treated in a Japanese time, yeah. And Whenever they make 
food, you know, like because they're making food in a very big pot, you know, so that everybody can share. Each family have one cup for one child, you know, to eat. Yeah. And they plant sweet potatoes, taro, and all kind of food so that we can have those food. So we never go hungry in those times, yeah. Everything is been provided, yeah. Because the company that my family work is a big company also. So he make his people as a group working to plan and to make provision for their own family. Night time, they go out there in the dark. You cannot use light, no, no flashlight, no nothing. No torch, you cannot use, you're not allowed to use that. Oh, they're gonna bomb you down. <laughs> if they see that the plane always go back and forth from Guam to Saipan, you know, and if they see that, they will machine gun <laughs> and bomb. <laughs> yeah, coming after that, yeah. So you have to be very careful, no light at all. Yeah, so that's how difficult it is when it's, the war is already started. Yeah, but we are very, stay in a very safety place, yeah, that my father and my older brother found that place. <clears throat> it's a big, uh, not very big cave, but like a double, it's a cave, but this one, this side have door, and the other side have door. But we climb up uh, my, my brother and my father make a stairs by bam with a bamboo so that we climb up because the cave is a little bit high. So we have to climb up to sleep on the cave. So that's how we do. Only my father make his little shelter down below so that he stay down there. Yeah. But all of us stay up there in the cave, yeah. To be safety, yeah. And that cave is very thick, you know, it's sticking on the wall of the mountain, yeah. So it's kind of really like safety one. Well, I'm don't, I don't worry so much about during war time because I still, I'm still very young to remember anything to be scared. <laughs> The first administrator, the American that came to Rota, Mr. and Mrs. Brown. And so they came there, they came to Rota, and they are the administrator. Yeah. They're a good person. She's a very nice woman, uh, the wife. And they have only one, one or two, two, two children, I think. Yeah. But they're very nice people. The husband is Mr. Brown. He is a very nice person, yeah. He used to be kind to all the local people, you know. Yeah. So we were still have uh, really not worry uh, things to do because people who is administrated there is very kind. Yeah, and they take care of the people very kindly. Mr. and Mrs. Brown stay in Rota until, I don't know what year is that, I forgot. And then from Rota they moved to Saipan, yeah. I used to stay with them. And uh, before they moved to Saipan, the wife, Mrs. Brown, she asked me if I want to follow them to Saipan. I said, no, just a minute. Let me go ask my parents if she allowed me to go. Because I never see Saipan and I don't never go anywhere. So I said, let me ask my mother first. So I tell my mother that uh, Mrs. Brown wants to take me to Saipan. And my mother says, 
that's not bad because I have brothers and sisters there. And here in Saipan, yeah. So she says, yeah, you can go and you meet my brother and sister there. Yeah. So she allowed me to go with Mr. and Mrs. Brown. <laughs> yeah, so I got to meet them here. Yeah, but then they have to move again, so I have to move back to Rota again. Yeah, stay with my parents. And then there will be a time when there's a free time to travel, like from Rota to Guam. It's very close. So I used to travel by boat, you know. One of my brother in law, my older sister's husband, he's a captain of the boat. So we can ride on the boat free. <laughs> so we ride on a boat from Rota to Guam. Yeah. The how can we go trip like that. I work as a helper. She didn't treat me like a maid, you know. She treated me like a daughter. And, I, and she says, you're not my maid. You're my helper. You're just going to help me. That's all. Yeah. She doesn't want, her, want me to be treated like a, like a slave. No. She treated me like a daughter, like there. Yeah. So that I stay with them. And then when it's time for them, because they are, they are the administrator in Rota, so they have to move back to Saipan. And so Mrs. Brown says, you want to come to Saipan? I said, wait, and then me ask my mother, because I don't know. And, and I asked my mother, I said, Mrs. Brown asked me if I want to go with them to Saipan. So my mother says, it's not bad, because I have a brother and sister there. You can go and meet them over there. So she allowed me. So I went with Mr. and Mrs. Brown here to Saipan from Rota. <laughs> ah, my husband, his name is Sir Rafael Kamatsumafnas. <laughs> I get married in Rota. I met him here in Saipan. But he never get any chances, anything to even to talk to me because my uncle is very strict too. So he wants to bring his parents to talk to my uncle about me. But he cannot speak to me because my uncle wouldn't allow him to talk to me. That's how strict they are, see. So he don't know what to do already, your, your uncle. And he bring his parents to talk to my uncle, you see. But my uncle says, I'm sorry, I cannot make that decision because the girl has mother and father. I cannot decide it anything. Yeah, you have to see their parents, her, her, her own parents or I get in trouble. That's my uncle's answer. He is afraid with my mother too. <laughs> because my mother is the oldest in this family. I have nine children, six boys and three girls. <laughs> I had a big family too, yeah. Yeah, but I raised them all, yeah. every one of them, yeah. I wasn't, I don't even know him yet that time, you know, she, because I was still single and I always have to go to my uncle's house okay. every my vacation, like Saturday and Sunday I stay with my uncle, so that's how your grandpa see me and she started to make friends with my uncle to have a chance to talk to me, but my uncle never gave him a chance. Those times, there's no bus. There's a, uh, a dump truck. <laughs> they make that as a school bus, you know, in the beginning, yeah. And then later on, and then they have this, uh, I, I forgot what kind of truck they use, yeah, so that they bring the school, I mean the children to school. And he's a driving, he's, your grandpa is a driver for that, 
uh, truck, and then uh, later on they have this bus, yeah. So he became a school bus driver, yeah. I don't have work to do, so I stay home with my kids, yeah. I'm still not working. Yeah, later on, I think, I don't know, I forgot what time, what, what year is that. But I already have children when I start working also. And I used to work on this American family, yeah. But you know, my kids is uh, already, one of them is big enough to watch their own brothers, you know, the little one. So that's how we do. Yeah, we try. I work as a maid where the American people stay on a barracks up some, some place in Capitol Hill. Yeah, so that's how uh, I met your grandpa, I think. And I don't know. I could remember many things. Our first business is we buying scrap. <laughs> yeah, we have a little money, so we buy the scrap and we clean them and we pack them as a. We put them in a big drum cans, you know, and then Mr. Manning Bella Gomez, my uncle, he's the one that taking care of that business of a scrap business. So all we have to do is we buy them from the people and then we clean them and we pack them in a big drum can, like maybe each drum can contain five or six hundred pounds of that scrap. And then we, uh, my, your well, grandpa do all things to make it secure that it won't be broken, you know. And then that one, they send it to Japan. And Mr. Manning Gomez is my uncle, so my mother's cousin. He's the one that take care of that one. So he the one handled it, send it to Japan, and we give him uh, interest commissions, you know, like because he's the one sending them by his name, yeah. We order some things, and some things are really uh, order from Japan. A drink we order from Japan, curing beer and or other things that we can order from Japan, yeah. But we have uh, a man, a businessman that really help, helping us to do those business. But we're doing well. We let one other man working for this Mr. Bill Gomez, he's my mother's relative also, that working for that scrap business, you know. And so uh, we make him stay we make one room for him, and we provide food for him. But the company always uh, repay us for something good, you know, for doing, helping that man with us. Mm. The Japanese is a very thankful people. They always show appreciation when you do something for them. My uncle, Manuel Villagomes, he tell me, I will help you to do so. So I'll give you all the merchandise that you needed. You build a little store. Yeah. So my husband did that. So we have a little store and he gave us some merchandise to make business. Yeah. He helped us a lot also. Oh he they all passed away already. I feel so bad about it. I forgot why did I close the store. There's a Typhoon Jean or whatever it is, they call it. And even the new shelter that we have, even the house is blowing away. <laughs> Everything is gone. 
for how many years we worked for those things, and then at one moment, they all disappear. Yeah, so it's very difficult. But then we gain back a little bit, little by little. And we make a little store again, but not much to do anymore, because cannot go on like that. My children is growing up and go to school, and we need many things, you know, for provisions for them. So it's it's difficult, yeah. You know.